All right, we're going to deep dive the Red Sox. We're bringing in John Tomasi and also Jared Caravas, who announced yesterday he's joined DraftKings. He has a new podcast, Baseball is Dead, wink, wink, which debuted today ahead of opening day for the Red Sox. Um, okay, base, I mean, I, I don't think baseball is dead because I sat and watched and cheered loudly for the Brewers against the Cubs today. But, guys, I, I do look at this Red Sox team and I'm like, get me excited. Get me excited about 2022, Jared, because I don't look at this team and think that they are going to be able to recapture the magic of last year. Can I just start by saying Garrett Cole is such a geek? <laughs> what, a, what a ridiculous clip that was. Oh, my God. It's like it, a hippie with a shotgun. Yeah, and he sounds like Kermit. Anyways, uh, <laughs> this, this Red Sox team this year, uh, and, and I think I was talking to Tomasi before we went on, they had a lot of things go right last year. This year, it's the, the Chris Sale thing. People, that's like a negative. Everyone's like, oh, Chris Sale's hurt again, the rib and everything. You kind of wanted him to take a little time off because we're, the days of seeing 32 starts from Chris Sale, we're not going to see that again. So if you have Chris Sale on the shelf, it better be in the first half. So that's number one. But number two, I think people are sleeping on how good and how deep of a lineup they have. And I think when we go into spring training, we're talking about the Devers contract, the Bogarts contract. It's good to have players hungry that have won before. That's another thing, too. When you have complacency in camp, that's a bad thing. There, I don't get the sense that there's complacency with this group. I don't get the sense that the guys who have won don't care to win again. I think that you can build off of last year the, that there, there were low expectations and they exceeded those expectations. I think that this is a hungry group that wants to get back to where they were last year and go past that mark. Do you agree, Tomasi? Well, Trey, I think you said it right off the top. Like, we don't think they can recapture that magic. I think the one thing they might have going for them is – despite winning 92 games, despite being in the ALCS last year, they're still coming into this year underestimated, and that's what ultimately led us to embrace them. We just didn't expect it. Now we're back in a similar position. We don't expect it again. So I do think they are positioned to surprise us, and those are the teams that we end up embracing. Surprise us like win a World Series? I mean, I, that's like, are they capable? Like, well, how Jared just did just say it. Like, they have a deeper lineup yeah. than most of us so, expect. Like, are they better than we're better than most people are giving them credit for? And it, you know, I look today, and, and some publications have them as low as fourth in the AL uh, in the AL East. Like, it doesn't seem to be like they're that bad. I mean, you could win 89 games and finish fourth and still make the playoffs. That's just how the AL East is this year. Uh, to say that they're a World Series contender, I don't know about that. It probably does on sale. I'm not confident that given how he hurt himself that he's going to come back and be an impact guy. I think it's he comes back. It's kind of like what he gave you last year. It's fits and starts. And I just I don't know how you count on him. And so if you take him out of the equation, now you say, do you really have enough pitching even in today's game, which is all about bullpens? Do you have enough pitching to get there? I don't think they do right now. Maybe things will change. I, I agree. I, that's my biggest concern right now is the pitching. I also kind of look at, you know, you're adding Trevor Story offensively, but you lost Hunter Renfro. Not saying that Renfro, what he did last year, that he could duplicate again this year. I, I like selling high on Renfro in the offseason. But what he did offensively, you hope to get that from a guy from Trevor Story. So, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like they're kind of entering this season in a similar position that they did last year. But – Last year, they also went out and got a Kyle Schwarber at the trade deadline. Yeah. Who's that guy going to be? Like, because you lost Schwarber as well. Um, so even from an offensive standpoint, you're just you're not as good as you were last season. Yeah, I suppose the one thing that both of you sort of alluded to is that this is a lineup with a lot of guys who are on their last year of their deal and want to get paid again next year. So there's some motivation, whether it's in-house or out-of-house, to uh, perform well. Well, yesterday it was reported that Rafael Devers rejected a contract offer from the Sox that was too low to consider. Today, Xander Bogarts, who can opt out of his deal after the season, was asked about a contract extension in the near future. Here's what he said. A few years ago, you agreed to your new contract a few days into the season. Do you think there's any chance of that happening again this year? No. Okay. No. That's it. Short and nice. sweet guy. No. No. Is he going to be here next year? No. I don't think so. I, I, I would like him to be. Sorry, I'm jumping in. Uh, I don't think so. I think Heim Bloom does not love to spend money. He doesn't love to give out the $30 million a year that it's going to take to keep Sandra Bogarts. I think that's a mistake. But, Jared, if you can, convince me I'm wrong. I, so the, what turned me a little bit 
is the fact that when uh, Sam Kennedy was talking about it, and he was almost getting emotional talking about Xander Bogarts and his uh, impact and his importance to this franchise. At one point, it's like, okay, you, you put Bloom in a position to make decisions, difficult decisions. Obviously, we saw the Mookie Betts trade. But at some point, does ownership step in and say, hey, like, we're kind of going to override some things here. Like, this guy is very important to what we have going on and moving forward. I think that if there's one guy on this roster, obviously, if you were to pick one or the other, you kind of have to go with Devers in terms of if you can only pay one in terms of talent. But – is Xander Bogarts that one guy that ownership says we can't lose him? He's one of the most, if not the most important piece that we have moving forward. I could see that happening. I could. How, I really much, would, could. how much would you be willing, if you're the Red Sox, to, to keep Devers and Bogarts? How much would you be willing to give them? Oh, man. Uh, we were not your money. Before. Yeah, so but somewhere between, based on like what Correa got in the 35 AAV range, but I would go like between 30 and 32. For both? No, no, no. Well, yeah. I mean, Devers is probably going to cost that as well. I mean, yes. Yeah. You're going to – yes. It's going to cost money. But you have money coming off the books. You have David Price's contract. You're paying him half of what he's making with the Dodgers. Let's say they don't bring back J.D. Martinez. There's money there. Uh, so they can get it done. It, it's it's not a matter of if they can do it. It's if they want to do it. Yeah, and, I, and Jared raised a great point, which, you know, Heimblum was brought in to cut payroll and all that stuff, and he did it. And now we're kind of reaching the point where – it may be that ownership wants to pay guys more than the chief baseball officer does. And so does ownership say, you know what, Xander Bogarts is worth it. He's a foundational player, you know, homegrown, all of that stuff. We are going to extend ourselves to keep him, and it's almost over the objections of the guy running the show. I don't think that's beyond the realm of possibility. Who should the, who should the Sox follow? Should they follow ownership, which sometimes is more heart than head with somebody like Xander Bogarts, or is it smarter to go, John, the path of High and Bloom, who's like, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see any need to overpay for both of these guys. Although I also feel like this team would never be hamstrung by that because it's the Red Sox. Yeah, but the thing is we know that because of the artificial, uh, you know, in, in terms of the CBT, they just treat that like a de facto salary cap. And so you can't spend, you can't spend $30 million on everybody. I personally would prioritize Bogarts. I'm a little different than Jared, I guess, just because of what he means to the franchise. And I think he's more likely to take the Tom Brady kind of hometown discount. He's already done it once. Uh, Devers clearly sees himself as a $300 million player. I don't know that he would get that in free agency, but he's certainly within his rights to test that out. All right. Well, the one new face everyone's excited about is Trevor Story. Sox gave him a huge deal just a couple of week back, a weeks back. So what can we, John Tomasi, expect from him? I look at Trevor Story and I see best case scenario DJ LeMahieu, what he did for the Yankees last year. I think that is a reasonable expectation for someone leaving Colorado who was already an all-star, already a silver slugger. He's going to continue to be that guy in Boston. I do not worry about the Coors effect. The only thing I worry about is but his elbow. Over and under, over under is 29 and a half home runs from under. what is under? Under. What do you say? Draft Kings, what do you say? Mm. <laughs> I, I would take the under, but not by much. Yeah. Set insider trading or I'm just kidding? A little bit, yeah. Okay. So you t both would take the under in 29 and a half. 27. Yeah, I, mean, I literally had that. Yeah, 27 yeah. was the number that I had in mind. Yeah. All right. Well, who hits more home runs then, uh, Rafael Devers or Aaron Judge? Ooh. Oh, man. Tough well, questions have... on this program. Nah. I mean, Rafael, I'm this taking, I'm taking Devers. Yeah, I mean, if you're Aaron Judge, you got to play the games. And you know, he usually doesn't play the games. So, yeah, I would, I would take Rafael Devers. On yeah, the same thing. The judge is never healthy. So, Devers. All right. Uh, so, with that said, then, Devers right now is sitting at plus 2,000 uh, for the MVP. Do you put money on those odds? No. You could sprinkle it, though. You could sprinkle it. I mean, you don't have to actually believe that he's going to win because now, I mean, you're playing in the same league as Shohei Otani. Like, come on. Like, that, that guy, you're talking about last year, one of the best single seasons by a baseball player ever. As long as he's healthy and playing baseball games, that's going to be your MVP. He's the new Mike Trout where it's like, yeah, and it's not teammate. even fun to, like, pick the MVP anymore. Shohei Otani is a thing. And Mike Trout is still there, too. So, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe now you're with DraftKings, you can teach me how to bet because I don't know how to do any of it. All right, start your mornings off right every weekday. Thank you, by the way, for coming in. I'm sure we'll see lots more of you this season.